Welcome to the Cunningham Piano Show, where we explore the world of pianos and the people behind them. I'm your host, Hugh Sung, and in this episode, I have a very special guest. She's actually one of our piano teachers in the Cunningham Music School. I have Miss Madalina Danila. Madalina, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited to be finally here. <laughs> um, I've heard uh, some pretty wonderful things about this podcast. Oh, well, thank you. Well, it's it's wonderful to have you here, and I'm so excited because I know what a phenomenal pianist you are, and frankly, how lucky we are to have you as one of our faculty members. In fact, I'm just so impressed with the caliber of teachers that we have in our music school. So I thought a, a nice way to get started would be to introduce you musically. That We actually have a video of you uh, performing something. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to hear? Uh, yeah, well, the selection that I suggested for this mm -hmm. um, was shot, I guess, last year. Mm -hmm. And it was right here in the uh, showroom of King of Prussia, uh, Cunningham Piano Store. And uh, the piece is by the uh, French romantic composer Camille Saint-Saëns. Uh, it is an etude, a very virtuosic piece, uh, full of um, special virtuosic effects like pyrotechnics and uh, it's a very fun piece actually and uh, I enjoyed I really enjoyed playing it and recording it and although it was hard work working on it obviously to get it right and, and stuff but uh, definitely I think it, it was worth it Thank you. 
Oh my goodness, that was incredible. You made the, it didn't sound like a piano, it sounded like a whole orchestra. It's just amazing. Bravo. Oh, thank Bravo. you. Bravo. Really wonderful performance. So let's start off with your your background. Your your accent gives you away. Where are you actually originally from? I've been hoping to get rid of it. <laughs> Don't, it's a beautiful <laughs> accent. I hope you never get rid of your <clears throat> accent. But where where are you actually from? Originally I am from Romania. Ah. I grew up there. And uh, for a big part of my life, <laughs> I spent my time there. And um, in 2019, I, I moved to the States. Mm -hmm. um, and I vividly still remember the, you know, the day of moving, my first day in Philly. Um, and so you actually I haven't been in the United States for that long, just a couple uh, of years. Yeah. Well, um, I had been uh, for a month. Okay. When I toured um, seven, sorry, ten states um, for you know auditions, I just I decided to uh, apply to a lot of universities in the states, and then I had to travel. I I had uh, come up with an itinerary, you know, to um, make sure that I cover everything. So I auditioned. So you you came here to the United States for study for for study, yeah, okay. to uh, expand uh, my horizon. Mm -hmm. I would say. Um, I had decided it was time to uh, move on. But your your English is is flawless. Um, do all Romanians speak English as well as you do? Or? I don't know. I mean, um, foreign languages. I mm -hmm. know there are still a big part of um, academic courses, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, aside from uh, school uh, classes, English classes. Uh, my, my mom had assigned me you know, when I was six or seven years to for English uh, private English lessons and also French because you know she thought one day this uh, these two might come in handy <sighs> so far English yes I am so envious S most Europeans speak several languages and I, f I feel so <laughs> feel so incompetent <laughs> compared to them so it, that's just such a blessing to be able to speak so I mean, there are languages certain languages that, that yeah. really come clo very close to Romanian yeah. and I've had uh, I remember one time being in Italy and um, of course we were speaking in uh, in English but I can understand a fairly amount of Italian mm -hmm. unfortunately one of my friends told me who, who's uh, Italian told me I don't have any idea <laughs> what you talk about you know when I hear you speaking in Romanian I have no idea I don't understand a word and I was like mm -hmm. how is that possible <laughs> so many words come from from uh, Italian I mean their mm. roots are mm -hmm. there interesting right mm. so it goes with Spanish so it goes with French so I guess we have an advantage like we can understand a lot of languages but uh, vice versa is not uh, so not you're like that. first of all you're a multilingual you're an incredible pianist let's spend a little bit of time talking about your musical upbringing uh, right. what was how did you get started how old were you when you started playing the piano so I was four mm -hmm. um, I mean, I just heard um, uh, some of uh, our family's friends, you know, had a daughter. They had a daughter, and I think she was a teenager back then. And one time we visited, and she was playing, um, I think it was a keyboard or an upright. Was she the same age like as that. you were? No, no, no. She was a teenager oh, back sorry, then. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Teenager. Okay. Um, and I just heard it, and I was like, well, I want that too, uh -huh. you know. And my mom was delighted because she had taken piano lessons, ballet. So her... her um, uh, cultural background was pretty impressive. I was mm -hmm. and later on, architecture and painting as professions, mm -hmm. and uh, you know she just wanted to give me a proper education and to have, um, you know, proper artistic background, without the thought of having pursuing later on a career okay. in music. Mm -hmm. So you know, and considering the times, I mean, it was uh, a few years, like three, four years after revolution. The, the mm -hmm. revolution was. You know, um, having a career in in music was still considered something. Hmm, not I would say not suspicious, but not so secure. I mean, not considered. You know, something solid. Mm -hmm. I would say, mm -hmm. only a few people were um, privileged to have that kind of career. Others mm -hmm. that didn't come from a musical family or didn't didn't have uh, enough financial means. Mm -hmm. Maybe musical uh, career was not the best option for them. So, so, yeah. uh, so what was next? I mean, you started taking lessons young. Your mother got you started without the expectation of you pursuing <coughs> a career. But it looks like you are pursuing a musical career. 
when did you make that decision and what did you do to pursue a career in music despite all the odds? I don't recall any moment making a decision for myself. I just don't, really. Um, I just, you know, I was thinking the other day, I, I couldn't do anything else. I just couldn't. Mm -hmm. Probably was the moment I said, well, I want that. You know, I want to be able to play. You know, so you, you knew from a very early age <coughs> that you wanted a life in music somehow, one way or the other, right? I guess so. I mean, it just sounded good, you know, and back then there were not so many distractions as, as today, mm. that's for sure. So, again, I'm, I'm, again, I'm fortunate to have had this kind of uh, pushing into, you know, discovering literature and painting and... Uh, having this this um, artistic background, you know, I, I remember um, seeing books of um, painting lying around all over because of my mom, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I grew up in that kind of environment. So what happened next? You, you uh, how did you pursue your studies as you got older? So you know, I went to the um, art high school mm -hmm. where, 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 where there were groups of um, little musicians, little painters, little uh, dancers and later a little bit later uh, actors as well um, so all the main arts were mingled there and then um, I went to the conservatory in Bucharest um, I spent a, a lot of time there and, and then Bucharest I decided to the capital, the capital of, yeah of and then Romania. I decided but where, where was your where was your actual home, hometown oh Romania. Brela, Brela. So yeah that's where is that in relationship to um, it's it's east it's one of the um, um, towns in the east. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And how far away is that from from? Probably Bucharest? about like three hours. Okay. So not too far away. All right. Yeah. So then, and so you went to Bucharest Conservatory. How old were you when when you attended the conservatory there? Uh, eighteen. That's the legal okay, age like, of like a, like a college. <laughs> like 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 a college. Yeah. Okay, but it's wonderful. conservatory of music. It's exclusively mm -hmm. uh, for uh, musicians, mm. musicians and composers. Yeah. Now, if I understand my music history correctly, Romania has a very rich classical music um, uh, history. Um, Bartok is a name that immediately comes to my mind as one of the famous Romanian composers. Dino Lipati, Radu Lupu, Clara okay. Haskell, yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. so, them. so your, your background, your musical background, you're bringing along with you a tremendous musical heritage that's just kind of in your genes, right? Yes, and uh, I'm super proud to be able to share it here mm -hmm. and so far uh, whenever I, I have performed Romanian pieces they have always been received with enthusiasm mm -hmm. and people love that yeah. I mean really it's, it's great music I think one of the curious things that uh, I've been recently discovering is how pervasive the Romanian influence actually is um, pieces and composers that I just never bothered to look up. I realized, oh, that was Romanian. Oh, this is a Romanian source. That's a Romanian title. This is a Romanian. It, it's incredible how wide and pervasive. You know, Romanian it. heritage goes beyond the myth of Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> how far away are you from Transylvania? Far away. Okay, good. <laughs> but I think that's just so amazing. So you come to this country and... Um, what brought you, I guess you kind of came here for further studies, is that right? Yeah, and okay. I um, I came not for the place, I came for the person. So who did you come to study or work with? Um, Professor Lambert Orkis. Um, I I had known him in terms of, you know, I had seen and recordings. Folks who, and for so folks who don't know who Lambert yeah. Orkis is. So he's... Um, world-class pianist mm -hmm. and uh, for many many years I would say more than three decades I hope I'm not wrong uh, he's been playing with the famous uh, violinist Anne Sophie Mutter and before he had been um, in um, a musical partnership with the um, famous Russian uh, cellist Matislav Rostropovich okay, wow. okay. so again like He's also heavy names right he's there. He's also the pianist with the, uh, the National Symphony. The National in Symphony in Washington. Okay. And, uh, and he's teaching now where? At, 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 at Temple. At Temple University. At Temple University. Okay. Um, and who else um, did you did you come primarily for him? Primarily for him okay. in chamber music because I wanted to study more chamber music and study you know uh, to to um, go mm -hmm. deeper. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, 
my luck was to find another person that I had no idea about. And who was that? Um, and she would become my piano teacher, right? Like uh, individual, to take individual oh, lessons okay. with. So, Professor Orcus is for your chamber music. Yes. And then this other person is. It's for piano lessons. Okay. So Who would this uh, be? she's um, Sarah Davis Bruckner. Okay. Um, she also um, world class uh, pianist, uh, incredibly inspiring, um, and um, yeah, I mean, these two people, these two musicians, mm -hmm. they've been um, tremendously inspiring to me mm -hmm. over the last years. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't have asked for a better mixture. Mm. You know, they their style of teaching is very different, completely different, I would say, style of playing, obviously. Um, but again, they they seem to balance each other very well, at least to my needs. Because mm -hmm. in the end, it's about what does every student need? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and again, without without knowing uh, Dr. Bugner. I just took the word of one of my friends. Oh, you should go there. You know, I she's the best. I was like, okay. Well, I don't know anyone here except Professor Orkis, so fine. You know, so yeah. Fantastic. And now you're one of the piano teachers here at the Cunningham Music School. Uh, I'm wondering, what is it that you try to bring for the students that get a privilege? get the privilege of working with you. What I try to bring to them everything that I have looked for, for mm. myself. Um, first of all, I, you know, from every time I get a new student, it doesn't matter if it's adult or kid, it doesn't matter the age, but I try to identify what is that they want, what, what does, uh, how can I increase their love for music mm -hmm. how can i increase their love for instrument even if they are beginners and they know absolutely nothing about piano playing so they they start from scratch mm -hmm. uh but i think this is the best time right to cultivate not only like to to teach them you know where middle c is or where you know the the notes and everything but to cultivate the sense of um the sense of music i would say and also the sense of curiosity uh, to look for more, I mean, not to limit themselves in, in that classroom, you know, for half hour, one hour lesson, doesn't matter. But to, to you know, to look beyond, because, you know, just the other day I heard um, the famous pianist Daniel Barenboim, whom I, I, I used to idolize uh, a lot, um, saying in, in a master class that music is crucial to be taught in schools because... It, it connects people socially, you know, through mm. everything that we call music, harmony, rhythm, melody, you know, everything. The, the way music gets structured, it teaches people, you know, to communicate with each other in a nonviolent way. Mm -hmm. That's actually really powerful right there. Mm. So what, I'm, what I try to do every time um, that I, I, I teach is to, like I said, discover like what what does my student need in that moment? How can I be of help? You know, how can I m make them play and in the same time enjoy, right? Because I I'm there to help them. I'm there to say, okay, look, I think this is gonna work for you because you know I have more experience, so I I can do this. I can help you with that, right? But at the same time, I'm so happy when they ask questions. You know, they don't like I said, they don't limit themselves only to that mm -hmm. to that kind of slice that we are you're trying to on. encourage an inquisitive mind yeah because this is what the kind of training that i have had mm, mm -hmm. the kind of background that i've had from all my teachers all my teachers with you know either for a long time or short time they've all poured something of their knowledge into my life mm, and mm. i realized that well that's what i need you know i need as many influences as possible and mm. especially at this age and at this this level, I think the word teacher, at least for for me, probably is not the best word. I would say mentor, something that I, I am looking for. Mm -hmm. Mentors, um, artistic influences. And that's what you hope to do yeah. for these students as well. Of to course, be their mentor. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to you know, it doesn't matter if they take piano lessons to pursue a career in music or not. Just to 
pursue their hobbies, you know. Um, but just I getting, have, getting I have, exposure to great exactly. art I have helps adults, us to be more human I have too. adults that they are so excited for that half hour. Mm. They are so excited. And they practice. And mm. they, you know, it's so easy to get along mm -hmm. with them, mm -hmm. you know. Because they could be doing something else. But they come in and they say, well, look, I've tried to do this and I've searched this. And I always, I always encourage them, especially because they are adults and they have access to social media. To, not to social, to um, um, internet, to mm -hmm. media, right? Mm -hmm. Um, to go beyond what I say there, and if there's something else that they that they can benefit from in terms mm. of understanding something that we work on, go for it, mm. you know. Mm. Um, yeah, and as for the kids, I try to um, I try to make it fun, mm -hmm. but in the same time give them useful information, mm. not just not just fun for the sake of fun, but fun in terms of useful, mm -hmm. you know, so that progress can be visible one week after another. And I am happy when parents get to sit uh, through the lesson so that they observe, so that at home they can guide the, the, the kids. I can see actually good results mm -hmm. because of that. Oh, sure. Parent involvement is yeah. always such a crucial aspect yeah. of any student's success. But, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just thinking how privileged all of these students are to get a chance to work with you because of your background, not just where you came from, but the musical heritage, the legacy that you're passing on to all of the students you get the chance to work with. It's, and it's I wonderful. speak about it to them. Yeah. I speak about it to them and I said, look, well, you know, when I was your age, you know, if it's a kid, I wish someone had told me that. Mm. And, you know, and of course I found out it later in life, but sure. just like that. And I, 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 I talk about my experience because mm. it's, it's useful to share, Sure. sure right? Sure. And again, I treat them, I know they're kids, but to my mind, I try to treat them as adults, because I know they understand very well mm -hmm. things. If they are explained properly, mm -hmm. they can understand very well. And mm -hmm. I try to understand them, um, to treat them as adults, because I, I, I trust them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. And it's such a personal relationship that develops between the teachers, or maybe mentors is a better word for you, yeah. mentors and mentees or students. But uh, um, anyway. Madalena, thank you so much for, for taking some time to share your story. Oh, be, be, before we close, I, I want to give you an opportunity to talk about anything special coming up for you, um, not just in terms of your studies, but in terms of your professional work. Are there any special concerts or special events that are coming so, up for you? So, um, yes, there are a couple of concerts happening in uh, April at Cunningham, uh, Shoro, Making a Prussia, and then... Um, French Del Presbyterian Church, and those concerts are in preparation for another concert taking place in May in Germany. Um, I will post details closer to that date. Mm, sounds mysterious. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, you know, in the fall, um, there's a concerto with orchestra at Temple, nice. mm -hmm. and uh, I'm hoping to just finish my doctoral studies soon, mm -hmm. so that. Um, I can begin my life, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Again, it, it's been such a privilege talking with you and uh, ch getting a chance to hear your story and hopefully getting folks who are interested in taking lessons the opportunity to consider working with you. I not, think. not just with me, but to come to uh, Cunningham Music School. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful school. And uh, I, was, I just want to say this, that um, I haven't taught in a school before, mm. you know, mm. I only had private lessons. Mm -hmm. um, and this this school, I know, I know it's private school, it's not like state school, uh, but this school is really, it's such a warm environment. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. it's a place that I really hope to, to find myself for a long time. It's yeah. really warm yeah. and it's really welcoming. It's interesting because we do the same thing in terms of the, the salespeople. We were talking to some mm. of my colleagues too, and we all remark about how much of a family it feels like yep. from the retail side of things. I'm so happy to hear that, you know, that same uh, vibe. Feel, vibe, yeah, is also something we strive for in the music school as well, just to feel like a family as well. Um, anyway, welcome to the family. It's great to have well, you. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, for the uh, Cunningham 
Piano Show. I'm Hugh Sung. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you.